Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Do you know what nemesis means? A righteous infliction of retribution manifested by an appropriate agent. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek. And today we are going to talk about the Resident Evil TV show for Netflix, which has been officially announced. And we're also going to get into this Hollywood Reporter article. And we're going to talk a little bit about the people who are making this series and some of my, you know, interests and concerns about it. So we're going to talk about all that today. I know we've talked about some of the rumors and stuff before about maybe this going into production. It is official now, and I had heard that it was most likely going to happen, but it just got slowed down because of COVID and everything that's going on. Um, so what, you know, the main executive producer on this, and before, actually before I get into that, let me just show, boom, there's the tweet right there to make it official. One of Netflix's accounts showed this image and, uh, and showed the script, you know, and you can see it on the image there where they said Resident Evil is officially a go. It's going to be an eight episode series for Netflix and it looks like uh, maybe 40 minutes of, and you know, 45 minutes an episode hopefully uh, so hopefully longer episodes you know kind of like House uh, Haunting a Hill House which I really like that show a lot um, I don't know if Resident Evil is going to capture that kind of spirit uh, of a show I think that would be genius if they did something that was just pure horror um, but it doesn't sound like that. Uh, so we're going to get into some, like, like I said, my concerns and my interests uh, as we get into this. But uh, but it's cool that this was officially announced now. So now I feel better about talking about it, about theorizing a little bit more about it, and discussing what you guys are interested in and what you guys are also not interested in, what you think are bad ideas and good ideas. That's what we're going to get into today. So make sure your comments are known down below. And if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff as well. So first, we're going to go over to um, Hollywood Reporter here. Uh, one of my old friends, Leslie Goldberg, uh, back when the Arrow TV show came out and Flash and all that stuff, um, Leslie was nice enough to let me write a couple articles for Hollywood Reporter regarding those shows, which was awesome. It was great. So seeing her covering this is awesome um, because she's super great. She's very talented. And uh, and so she goes over some of the, the bits about what we do know. So we got that you know post from Netflix uh, on Twitter, but we also got uh, some information here and like, I guess a culmination of the stuff we've heard before all consolidated into this nice article. So I'll put a link to that article down below so you can check it out. Um, but we have here, it says supernatural showrunner Andrew Dobb will oversee scripted live action series that inspired that is inspired by Capcom's video game franchise. And uh, they go on to say that Resident Evil is the highest grossing video game franchise of all time. Uh, between the six movies, it has made 1.6 billion dollars uh, for Sony. Um, you know, I'm guessing that's, I don't know if that's gross or if that's just in total and, you know, without counting the budgets of the movies in there, but it doesn't matter because the, I think it is gross though, but the budgets, each movie had like a 40 to $60 million budget. Like they're compared to most movies that are of that scale, they're made pretty cheaply and they, they tend to make their money back big time, especially overseas. So uh, it has a worldwide audience, Resident Evil. And so $1.2 billion for a, a small video game franchise that's horror-based is nothing to sneeze at, even though the movies are more action-oriented you know, oriented and not horror-oriented. Um, but still, you know, that's what the roots of the franchise are, is that it's horror-based. So to see it go to that level. And then also Resident Evil 7, which is now the highest-selling uh, Resident Evil game of all time, which is awesome because I really loved Resident Evil 7. As a fan, you know, since the early days of Resident Evil, I was so glad to see a game get back to horror, and it looks like it might again. So if you missed my last episode where we talked about werewolves and how they existed before in Resident Evil in some of the comic books, definitely go check that episode out as well. And I'll get into more comic book stuff with these magazines if you guys want. So if you do, let me know in the comments down below. Um, so yeah, so what we have here, Andrew Dobbs, so Supernatural is one of my favorite shows. You know, you guys know I have all the tattoos. I have uh, the demon protection, angel protection, the Mark of Cain. Uh, I'm a big fan of this series. And although I'm a hardcore fan and I love the first five seasons that Eric Kripke did, also go check out The Boys. It's his new show and it's amazing. And Jensen Eccles is going to be on that show next season as uh, Soldier Boy, which I'm very excited to see. Um, but, uh, but even after season five, I got to say there's been a lot of fun stuff in Supernatural. And I just love the journey of the Winchester brothers, I mean, and all their supporting cast. It's been great, you know, and uh, and not every episode knocks out of the park, but for the most part, I'm glad the series has continued past season five because there has been some really good moments uh, that I feel. Um, and so I like that you know, they're about to finish up. So that's what Andrew Dobb is doing. This show I'd heard was definitely going to happen. It was, it was, you know, being made and worked on and in pre-production stuff, but it couldn't go into production because of COVID. And also Andrew Dobb has a, uh, you know, obligation, obviously, to wrap up Supernatural. So before Supernatural went on hiatus, 
um, they had filmed eight out of their final 10 episodes. Uh, so the final season, 13 episodes have aired already. They were saving the last eight, um, and then they needed to film the last two, uh, you know, but they were waiting for after COVID to release them. So now that COVID, you know, is, is they're able enough to like work at least in a work environment for, for film and television, at least they're getting back to that. It's not a hundred percent safe, obviously for a lot of things, uh, to get back to work, but they're going to try and they're going to try to wrap up these final two episodes. So Andrew has to do that. He has to finish the last two episodes of Supernatural, and then he can develop, you know, uh, devote his full time to Resident Evil. But it looks like there are other people involved, and we're going to go over who some of those people are here. Um, we're going to—they're—they're they're still involved. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Constantine Films, uh, Robert Kulzer, and Constantine Films—they're the people who made the the live action film. So they own the rights to Resident Evil, not Sony. It's it's Constantine Films, but they distributed through Sony before. Now they're going to Netflix to do this. And they have uh, Robert Colzer who's going to be on uh, the show as a producer. Um, they also have Oliver Bourbon and uh, Mary Lee Sutton. Uh, and then also Brownwyn Hughes, who worked on The Walking Dead. And I got to say, when I read the premise of this, it kind of feels a little like Walking Dead. And I'm, and I'm a little concerned by that, uh, to be honest with you, because I did not like The Walking Dead show. Elements of it, I liked for sure. Some characters I liked. But overall, I, I didn't really like the show. So I don't know. Um, th that's uh, some level of concern for me. Uh, but it looks like Brown uh, Brownwyn Hughes is uh, going to executive produce and direct the first two episodes. Um, so we'll see. We'll see uh, what kind of style Brownwyn brings. Hopefully not a Walking Dead style, in my opinion. Um, so the storyline for this. Uh, so like I said, Andrew, once he wraps up the last two episodes of Supernatural, he can come back, join them full time. And they can start working on this series, pushing it into production, uh, out of post -produ or out of pre-production, get it into production, start filming it. Hopefully, they'll announce some casting at some point soon. Uh, I'm intrigued. So all these elements, some of these producers, not the Walking Dead stuff so much. Although we'll see. I give everyone a, a chance, you know, obviously. Um, but that seems like such a corporate decision. Like, hey, let's get someone who worked on Walking Dead to do our zombie show. And it's like, maybe that's a good move. Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but Andrew, I like the some of the recent seasons of Supernatural. I think they've been enjoyable. So for that reason, like I know some hardcore fans are going to be like, nah, it's not Eric Kripke. And I'm like, well, I know, but he's working on The Boys and that's a great show. Andrew has shown that he's capable of leading a team with other people. He's co-executive producer, so he doesn't do it alone, obviously. Uh, but uh, but no one works and no one working in movies does things alone. Everyone, it's a collaboration. And he's, I think, part of a team that has delivered good supernatural episodes to wrap the show up. So um, so I'm ex excited to see what he brings to Res Evil. So there's where my interest is, is into some of the people behind the scenes and then a little concerns with some of the people behind the scenes. So let's get on to the story. Um, the story is that the, net the Netflix series will tell a new story across two timelines. Now the two timeline thing I'm into, it reminds me a little bit of It. It's like, hey, let's tell a story about when these main characters were kids and then what it's like for them to be adults. That's kind of neat to me. I mean, it's it's kind of a uh, a little of a cliche and ripoff, but I think brought into Resident Evil, you could do neat things with that. You could have someone who's like the the children of a scientist, and then sh years later show, uh, you know, maybe their their parents were good people, and then later you show that their parents uh, created the worst the worst things ever. So to me, to do something like that, it would have been better to do like a Sherry Birkin show. So you could have had like Sherry Birkin as like a, a young girl set during Resident Evil 2. She gets rescued by Leon and Claire. And then you cut to 15 years later and it's Sherry Birkin, you know, working for the government, kind of like a la Resident Evil 6. And you kind of follow her story and living in the the, the destruction of what her parents have brought to the world by creating the G-Virus or something. To me, that would have been a much more interesting story that you could have, you know, paralleled the games and used game characters at the same time and still had a female lead because it seems like that's one, something they're trying to push is that, you know, the movies did it, so the TV show wants to do it. So in this one, we have a, a, the first timeline is a 14-year-old uh, set of sisters. Uh, one is named Jade and the other one's name is Billy. Their last name is Wesker. So already a million red flags go off uh, that I that I don't like because uh, of course Wesker is the most popular Resident Evil character as far as like he's like the Doctor Doom of that universe. He's uh, you know people know who he is, um, and then I would say like Leon and Claire and Chris and Jill are the other main characters. Uh, but uh, no offense to Barry and Carlos and all those other great characters and Sherry and stuff and uh, and Rebecca, but I'm just talking about like general public people might know. 
Uh, and, and a lot of those characters were also in the movies. So that's where you get the general public kind of knowledge of them. So I get the urge to go, hey, let's do a story about Wesker. But to have him with two young girls, uh, I don't know. Like, and you know, and I, I get it. It's an alternate universe, whatever. It's not really tied to the games, although they're trying to say that it it is kind of, but not really. I don't know. I'm just not feeling that part. It's like, all right, 14-year-old sisters, Jade and Billy, Wesker. I, I would have rather, like I said, a Sherry Birkin story. That would have made way more sense to me. Um, and then you could have then still brought in the son of Wesker when she's an adult. Um, and, you know, and you could say like, oh, you know, your dad, you know, Sherry Birkin is like, hey, uh, Jake, your dad uh, kind of screwed over my dad. And he, you, you know, your dad wanted T, you, com, you know, to complete the T virus. My dad wanted to complete the G virus. Together, they both ruined the world separately at separate times with their, uh, you know, uh, pursuit of power. And now it's up us, you know, up to us as their children to, you know, fix this. And that would have been way better. You could have had Sherry and Jake and just kind of retold uh, Res Evil 6, which is a terrible game. <laughs> it's a fun game to play, but has a terrible story. So you could have taken the good elements of that story and expanded it and told a Sherry Birkin story. Uh, that's just me. I mean, this is my personal opinion. So 14-year-old um, sisters Jade and Billy Wesker are moved to new Raccoon City. I also don't like that. New Raccoon City was nuked. Uh, by a tactical, a, a tactical nuclear missile. Uh, it was wiped out. Uh, so the fact that they rebuilt it in the span of like 20 years uh, with no f fallout of the radiation or anything, like, I don't know. I, that's, I don't know exactly what kind of missile hit the city, but I just don't, I'm not buying this already. It already seems silly to me. Um, so this is a manufactured corporate town forced on them right as adolescence is in full swing. So basically... They are moving to a new town. It's called New Raccoon City. It's a, it, I guess it's going to be a place of second chances because obviously the first Raccoon City, whether this one's built on top of the old one or it's built somewhere nearby, like you know, uh, half a state away or something, and they just call it New Raccoon City, whatever it is, it's a place for second chances, I guess, and they're being brought there at a peak point in their life when they're adolescent teenagers uh, going through you know teenager stuff, I guess. Um, but the more time they spend there, the more they come to realize that the town is more than it seems. There's a lot of moors in there. And their father may be concealing dark secrets. Their father, Albert Wesker. May be. So it looks like he's going to be a scientist that is hard at work on something, does something bad, and these two daughters f discover that. Um, and it's a secret that could destroy the world. Uh, the second timeline in this story is more than a decade into the future. so like 15, 16 years later. And there's less than 15 million people left on the earth. This immediately makes me think of the Resident Evil movies, uh, which I didn't like. I didn't like that they went that apocalyptic with it because the games do not. The games, the world is never goes full post-apocalypse in the video games. They just, they don't do it. Uh, they, a city was wiped out. The virus in that situation was contained, but at the lo loss of, um, you know, a million lives or whatever from Raccoon City. So and then other outbreaks that happened got contained by stars and uh, and uh, the, you know the BSAA and the other groups out there that you know the various characters work for. So to me, this it it just screams all the bad stuff in the movies that I don't like. Uh, this part here where they say the second timeline is less than fifteen billion of uh, less, less than fifteen million people left on the earth, and more than six billion monsters, uh, people and animals infected with the T virus. So Jade, who is now 30, struggles to survive in this new world while the secrets from her past about her sister, her father, and herself continue to haunt her. So I'm going to guess that either she lost her sister or they're going to do some kind of Code Veronica thing with her sister where her sister um, is taken by the Umbrella Corporation or by her father, Wesker, um, and then, you know, frozen and injected with something and then you know, 16 years later, much like Code Veronica when, uh, when uh, Alexia woke up like... 15 years later or 10 years later, whatever it was. I think it was, no, it was more than that. It's like t almost 20 years later, I think. Whatever the case is, um, it sounds very Code Veronica to me, which is fine because that's my favorite game in the franchise. I love Code Veronica. Um, but still, it's like, it, it's like, okay, let's, I'm all for doing new original characters and doing something new, but they're not really doing that. They're, I mean, they're doing new characters with Jade and Billy, but everything else seems to be tied to the games in ways that doesn't make sense to tie to the games. It doesn't make sense to have Wesker have two children that he um, is trying to care for and also, you know, work on, you know, uh, evil scientist things. Like, that's not who Wesker is. That's who maybe who Annette and William Birkin are, but that's not who 
Wesker is. So to me, that's where I'm saying, like, I have interest. Oh, there's Code Veronica. Maybe Code Veronica references. I'm, I'm theorizing there. But maybe there's some references to that. And then, but then there's these movie references and these, these terrible takes on the video game over here. Also, setting it in two timelines, it feels like, oh, okay. So in the past, like I said, this is where I got the Haunting of Hill House thing. I'm like, well, that'd be cool if, you know, there's, they do psychological stuff when they're kids and they see like, you know, a, a secret lab or an experiment or something breaks out or something like that. And it adds some horror there. That could be neat. And, but the present day stuff just sounds like Walking Dead and the Res Evil movies, like the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth Res Evil movie, where everything's just so far gone and post-apocalyptic. It just sounds like a bummer. And you're just going to have all these different monsters running around with with, with no real rhyme or reason. Like, I, I kind of like the video games where they structure things where it's like, all right, in this lab, there was this kind of monster in this lab. But when you do a movie and it's just all, it's like everything's loose, then it's like, okay, so you can walk down the street and there should be like, you know, liquors hunting in a pack, but also with a, a nemesis somewhere. Like, they, it's just too crazy. And they're obviously they're not going to have the budget to that, do that on the show. So I don't know. I don't know why. Like, I don't know what it's like. Hey, six billion monsters. Well, we're never going to see that on the show. We're never going to see six billion monsters. So it, I don't know. It, it just seems kind of silly to me. Um, anyway, so Capcom launched Resident Evil in 1996. The franchise has gone on to become one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time. More than 100 million games sold worldwide in the 25 years since its creation. And it was expanded into theme parks and features, which is true. There's a theme park in Japan, I believe. Uh, the sixth film franchise has grossed more than $1.2 billion worldwide, making Resident Evil the most successful movie franchise based on a video game ever. Uh, Resident Evil becomes the latest video game to get the TV treatment. Others in the works include Halo at Showtime, which we'll definitely be covering that show when we get more information. Um, and then also Netflix is The Witcher, which is a, a prequel spinoff, uh, you know, in the works for that. So obviously that show's already started, but they're doing more of The Witcher as well. So I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. I have a, uh, had a lot to say about it. The full article to this I'll put down below from Leslie at Hollywood Reporter, so check it out there. And give me your thoughts, because like I said, there's things I'm interested in, and there's things I'm not. I'm really scared about the plot. I don't like this Jade and Billy Wesker thing. If you would have given them any other last name, well, besides Birkin and, or anything like that, like, you know, you could have even done Barry Burton. It could have been, uh, Barry Burton has two daughters. You could have even told that story with Moira, and, or was it Moira? I can't remember his two daughters' names from Revelations 2, I can't remember. Um, but you could, there, there's so many other... Like, so when you're translating something to a TV show or movie, you go, okay, who's this character that we're going to write? Like, what kind of character do I want? And you go, okay, I need a scientist father figure who is going to care for these two girls, but he's going to be caught up in some science experiment stuff. He's creating monsters. He's got an obligation to his company, but he's got a little bit of a conscience. I'm assuming, I don't know fully what the character of Wesker is going to be like on the show. I'm assuming he's got to be some of that because he has kids and he's caring for them. Whereas the Wesker in the video game never gave a crap about Jake and never went, bothered to go look him up or anything. So that's what I'm saying. Like I'm basing it off that. So I'm guessing this TV show Wesker has a little bit of a conscience. So that's not Wesker. <laughs> so when you're when you're writing these stories, you you sit there and you got your character and you're like, all right, well, these are all of his attributes. None of those attributes, other than the scientist creating a monster part, sound like Wesker. So why make it Wesker? Why not say, oh, well, it could be Birkin. It could be, there's a million other scientists uh, in the Resident Evil universe that you could have based it on. You could have done one of the generic ones, like, you know, Mr. Blue or Miss Red or whatever. You could have done any of that stuff. Uh, you know, you could have made them um, Ashfords. You know, you could have followed the story of the Ashford twins. Whatever. There's there's so many elements that you could have done. And I appreciate them wanting to go in a new direction. But I also feel like they're not really. They're, they're, I feel like, like I said, there's some it ripoffs here by doing like, oh, here's what they were like as kids. And here's what they're like as adults. Same with the uh, House on, or Haunting of Hill House has that same element, what they were like as kids and as adults. So it's like, to me, that's not even original either. I mean, it's, maybe it's original to Resident Evil, but it's not really original to, um, in general, to horror stuff. So uh, so that's where I kind of feel like I'm like, I'm struggling with this. So like anything, I'll give it, I'll try to give it a fair shot. I mean, uh, you know, I, I gave the movies a fair shot. I saw all six of them in the theater. So clearly, you know, the name Resident Evil alone is enough to get me to watch something. Although I wish I wasn't such a slave to it, uh, but I am. I, you know, like I love Resident Evil, and if it's not, even if it's not great, I, I want to at least experience it because that's how much I care about this franchise and this universe. I just, I love it. You know, and actually, I'll be reviewing Resident Evil uh, two. I think I might do a review of Resident Evil one, the remake. Two and three, both of those remakes. I think I might do reviews of those coming up soon. 
Um, so, you know, be on the lookout for those. I'll probably put those up in October. I filmed, I, I filmed the th one of them already, but I might redo it because I feel like I wasn't as detailed as I could have been. So, um, and I'm trying to avoid other people's reviews of those games because I don't want some of their, you know, wordage stuck in my head. So I might refilm that the Resident Evil 3 uh, video and then uh, so that way I'm not like shaved head in two episodes and then long hair in another one. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, not that that really matters, but um, I'll probably get those up in October and uh, I'll put them here on the Nemesis show for sure for you guys. So uh, so yeah, you'll see kind of my thoughts on the remake universe and we'll talk a little bit more about the stories. And then I might do more commentary tracks. We did the commentary track for the first movie. So if you haven't watched that, go check it out. And I'll probably do commentary tracks for the second and third movie. Maybe we'll try to do those in October as well to get you guys uh, some more RE content on this channel. And I'm hoping we'll get more video game news soon for Resident Evil 8. So fingers crossed for that. And uh, maybe more information about this. Right now, I'm hesitant. I'm 50-50. Uh, I'm in because it's Resident Evil, but I'm worried because of some of the story elements. Uh, it sounds kind of bad and generic, and that's why I kind of like, could be good, could be bad. I don't know. We'll see. As long as it's horror, I might like it, but, uh, but it has to be well acted and well written too, and that all comes down to whatever I see the trailer and then from the trailer into the first episode, so... Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that I like this, and fingers crossed that Resident Evil fans in general like this, and that the, hopefully uh, it being on Netflix reaches more mass people, and at least makes more people aware of the franchise, maybe even brings in some new fans. So even if some of us old fart, you know, Resident Evil fans don't like it, maybe there's a whole new generation of Resident Evil fans that will, you know, that will like it. So, hey, if that helps, and if that helps sell Resident Evil 8, the video game, when it comes out... Let's keep our fingers crossed because that's the best thing that can happen is that success after success means more Resident Evil. And come on, I mean, even if you don't like them, it's great to have more Resident Evil stuff in my opinion because someone will like them. So uh, let me know your thoughts down below of this show. I talked long enough about it, but I I'm intrigued and I had a lot to say and I wanted to cover some of the stuff we didn't talk about before. So uh, those are all my thoughts on this. And if you want to know more, have more specific questions or have your own thoughts, let me know down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.